In this video, a deep dive review of the Jackson Juggernaut Pro Series ET6. In my opinion, I think the Juggernaut shape is one of, if not the best looking Super Strat bolt-ons out there. I love the flat end here instead of a rounded bulbous alternative. It gives it more of like a fast look and a more of aggressive look on the really pointy horns. In fact, so pointy that the top one had to get a dowel in for the strap button and I'm an absolute sucker for arch tops. I think they're just a little bit more comfortable while playing, especially on a strap, and it adds value to the guitar because they're harder to make. I've always been drawn to the construction of the Juggernaut. The way the bolt-on is executed seems so obvious, but is very rare in comparable guitars. Neck throughs are thought to be more comfortable because there's a seamless connection from neck to the body, but it doesn't have to be. And that is demonstrated here with the so nicknamed handshake heel. Another thing regarding construction is the use of a scarf joint versus a volute. If you're going to angle the headstock for tuning stability, it's generally a good idea to reinforce the headstock somehow. I'm looking at you, Gibson. And a scarf joint is not only a more responsible use of wood, you get extra area of strength and I would argue the biggest advantage is you don't have this bump next to the headstock. It's just a much more seamless, smooth connection into the headstock from where you hold the neck when you're playing. On this guitar, it is extra cool because you can see three different colors of roasted maple based on the amount of sugars in the wood, and I happen to get a very dark trio. The Mish Mansour signature line of Jackson guitars comes in many different flavors with two bridge types. Currently, this is the only ever tuned six string, and it comes in one color, chalk, which is based off of a Porsche color of the same name. I personally think it is very plain compared to the understated badass look of the rest of the Misha guitar's color palette, such as the USA Blue Frost, which has this detailed glow with chrome pickup covers. And look, I'm a huge Porsche fan too, but I would pick probably Lava Orange or Python Green or Shark Blue before Chalk. And this is all paired with one of my favorite headstocks in the business, ready to defend yourself against any sort of zombie apocalypse. And some notes about the Evertune Bridge. You would have to try pretty hard to not enjoy the convenience of not having to tune your guitar. When compared to the Hardtail version, I do notice some compromise in sustain and it does add a significant amount of weight to the guitar. My opinion right now is indifferent considering the price difference. I don't hate tuning and I would prefer to have the flexibility of any string gauge or tuning that I want to do at that moment, but the bridge does work very well. And it's not necessarily self-explanatory, but it is easy enough to pick up. The biggest, I guess, understandable disappointment of this guitar is not having the bare knuckle pickups. Looking at this guitar from a perspective of just a guitar, then the bridge pickup is hot and bouncy, has good feel, fits right into a mix. If you're looking at it from the perspective of a periphery guitar, it doesn't have the body or aggression of the Ragnaroks and it doesn't have the mid-range gut punch of the Juggernauts. The neck pickup is pretty dead to be honest. I don't know if it's from the Evertune bridge or something happened in QA, but just listen to this comparison to the Bare Knuckle Polymath set. a good amount of bright upper mids in the Jackson MM1 pickups to really give it a good genting, but it doesn't have any of those periphery qualities that you would expect from the guitar, and the mere presence of these qualities is absolutely essential to the guitar selling market. <laughs> I 
ultimately when you buy a signature anything you expect a signature sound i remember putting demarzio crunch lab liquefier in an epiphone explorer and even playing through line six stuff it had that john petrucci sound and the hype train left the station forever the reason i say it's understandable is bare knuckles cost upwards of double the amount of popular aftermarket guitar pickups is it worth it I think so, I'm not gonna lie. Bare Knuckle Pickups really butters my biscuit. There is absolutely nothing serendipitous about those pickups. Every frequency is calculated and the string clarity and the way they layer is unlike nothing else I've ever played or heard. Now roping the price of the Bare Knuckles into the price of the guitar, benchmarking Ibanez, it would cost two to $300 for the upgrade, maybe even more. And so I don't want to say exact prices because it, it seems to keep going up, but the retail price of the Pro Series Juggernaut ET6 would rival a lot of outstanding used guitars out there and even come to entry-level custom shop, which would look and sound exactly the way you want. Now I'd like to do a light comparison with the USA counterpart of the Juggernaut. And from the moment I pick up the USA version, the finish feels a lot better. There's a little bit more texture to it, where the Pro Series is a little bit more plasticky. And the hardware on the USA version is hip shot, which is replaceable, but the Jackson stuff is probably good enough to get by on the Pro Series. The hip shot stuff will have a little less play and have more of a premium touch. For example, the rubber on the knobs, or you can see the toe knob on the Pro Series has a little bit more play. The Pro Series ET6, being the second generation of Juggernaut, maintains the 20 inch radius, but has a roasted maple neck with no binding, and it does not have the figured maple of the second generation USA models. And because of the differences in neck wood, it's hard to compare feel, but I can say that the finish on the back of the Pro Series can go against the absolute best. It is super smooth and has that signature roasted maple softness to it. If you prefer a grippier feel, then you are not going to like this. The biggest difference in my eyes other than the pickups is something that is somewhat deal breaking for me and that is the stainless steel frets. There's nothing wrong with the nickel frets of the Pro Series. They're just generic nickel frets. The way your fingers come in contact with the string on the fret is very important because your fingertips are very sensitive. And stainless steel frets offer more sustain, a smoother surface for bends, and most importantly, they make the guitar last. Both of my USA Juggernauts are six plus years old and they play exactly how they've always played. Now I'm in touch with reality enough to tell you that the Pro Series off the shelf is not bad whatsoever. But having stainless steel frets would have allowed that, as a standalone guitar, dominate the price range when comparing it to Solar Guitars or the premium Keith Marrow Schecters that do offer stainless steel frets. Then there are little things in comparison, like the USA's Luminlay has the signature black ring around it, but both have glow-in-the-dark side dots. The backplate hardware is a little higher quality, and the USA comes with a case and exclusive case candy, which I think is really cool but both come with strap locks. Lastly, another noticeable difference is a big deal to a lot of people is those three little words under the Jackson logo. Now some tone tests, starting with running it through a couple of gain stages. <laughs>
In conclusion, I think this guitar has an incredible toolkit for the needed utility of a modern guitar player. The Sonic Lee leaves some things to be desired, especially as a periphery fan. I have a set of Bare Knuckle Ragnaroks in the queue for this guitar, so we'll see what happens after that upgrade. I would like to mention that this video is part of a collection of periphery guitar reviews, demos, and comparisons, so make sure to check that out on the channel. That's it for this video. Please subscribe and like.